In the previous two episodes, I've showed you how you can send data from your ESP32 to your Raspberry Pi server. I've also showed you how you can use Node-RED to graphically represent that data using a dashboard. In this episode, we're gonna go a bit further with the dashboard and I'm gonna show you how you can send data back to your ESP32. Before we get started, make sure that you're comfortable with the concept of the MQTT pub sub model. I have done an episode on this, so if you have forgotten, if it's been a bit of time since you watched that video, make sure you go and watch it again. It will really help you understand what we're doing in this episode. Let's take a look at the code that we will be using in this episode. As always, I'll leave a link down below in the description for you to download it. The first thing I'm gonna show you is this here. I have put in place a software solution for a problem that we see sometimes when we're using devices like the BME 280. Sometimes you get readings that come through that are not accurate, not correct, and you want to filter for those. You can put in place a hardware solution, but because it happens you know, only once every 20 or 30 readings, Doing this is just far easier for me. What I've done here is I've created two constants, one with a temperature threshold high of 60 degrees Celsius and one with a temperature threshold low of minus 10. This function should be familiar to you because we've used it in a few episodes now, and that is get values. However, I've made a small change to it. Instead of using the word void to initiate the function like that, I've changed it to boolean or bool. What that allows me to do is return a value of either true or false, and we'll see how we use that in just a little while. If we scroll through the code, we can see a couple other changes that I've made. I've removed the air pressure sensor readings from the BME 280s, because I don't really need them for my functionality. If you want to keep them in, have a look at episode 15 or 14, and the code is still in there to read that. All I need is the temperature and humidity readings. I've also neatened up a few things here. I've put a decrease symbol there instead of an asterisk. And if we come down to the bottom, what I've done here is where we're returning zero or one or false or true. And this is gonna help us decide whether we actually push these values through to our node red instance through MQTT. This if statement is just checking that the temperatures for the BME 280 is within the threshold that we specified right at the top, which is 60 degrees Celsius and minus 10 Celsius. And if it is within that threshold, it's gonna return true. If it's outside of the threshold, it's gonna return false. And where we use that is down in the loop. We can see that if get values, so it's gonna run get values, it's gonna get the values we need from the sensors. If it returns true, then it's gonna to publish to MQTT. And if it's false, then it's just gonna skip over it and go again. Now you'll notice there's a little something else that I've added in here. I've removed the delay. Now you don't want delays inside your code when you are receiving data from MQTT. And I'll explain why in just a second. First, I'll explain the code that I'm using instead of delay. There are two variables created here. One is millis now, which I start off at zero. So when we boot the device, it's starting at zero, which is valid because you'll see down below in the code what we're doing. Send delay is the delay that I want in between sending the sensor information through to my server. I've set this to 20,000 milliseconds or 20 seconds. So if we go back down to the code, we can see those two variables are used over here. Millis is a function that is very important and it's something I use a lot. It's the measurement of the number of milliseconds from when you boot up your device. So when you start your device, it starts off at zero, which is why I set millis now to zero. And it just keeps counting up and basically you're using that to set schedules, you're using that to set delays. It's a good way to measure time or time lapsed. Now, if we look down here, we can see that if the code runs successfully, so if get values is true, then it's gonna run all this, and it's gonna get down to the bottom, and millis now is gonna to equal to millis, whatever millis is at that very moment, which means that we are then gonna wait another 20 seconds before we run this again, because millis needs to be bigger than millis now plus the send delay of 20 seconds. So it's gonna wait till this, is 20 seconds ahead of that. Once it is, it's gonna run through this code again and millis now is gonna set itself back to whatever the current millis is and rinse and repeat. Similar to when we were publishing content via MQTT, we are creating a variable 
down here for receiving the data or subscribing to the data. So here we have MQTT float switch, and that is the topic that we're going to be sending data to. With the subscriptions, we're doing exactly the same thing, and we're subscribing to these topics. Now where we're using that is down here, we have topics subscribe, you can subscribe to as many as you want. And that means that data is getting pushed via MQTT all the time, you are only going to respond when you are getting the topics that you've subscribed to. You need to make sure that you're calling the topics subscribe function. I do that inside my reconnect function. So you can see I do it right at the end of that. I also do it over here as soon as it's connected to the grow temp controller client. We then need to create a function to actually process the data when it comes through. So the topics that we subscribe to, when they are published and we receive them, then we need to do something with that. And that's what this function MQTT callback is for. We can see that it's receiving a topic, a message, and also it's just the length of the message. What that allows us to do, you can see here I'm just debugging, so just saying what is the message that's been received, and it's then going to show it over here. This bit of code over here is just iterating through the actual message itself so that it can lay it out into a string, and here we're just printing that message out. However, there are other things that you can be doing within this code. You can see we have some logic here that's checking. Is it MQTT flood interval? If it is, then we want to print that. But we won't necessarily just be printing. What we'll probably be doing at this point is assigning variables to the new values that are coming through on these topics. Then this MQTT callback needs to be mentioned one other time, and that is in your setup function. We need to go down here, and we need to set callback to that function so that it knows that when it's receiving data that it needs to process it through this function here. Let's get this code onto the ESP32 and see how it works. So there we go, the device is all running, the code is running fine. Let's go into Node-RED and see what we can do. So this is familiar to you because we were working on this earlier. So let's have a look at what that looks like just to remind you. This is the dashboard. And we can see that data is coming through. Let's go have a look at how we can send data back to our ESP32. The first thing we're gonna need is an inject for now. And we are also going to take an MQTT out function. So we're going to MQTT, the data we want to send, let's send to the right topic and we will use flood interval. And we just put that up here, done. And the timestamp, yeah, we don't want to have that as a timestamp being injected. What we want to do, let's put a number in there and the number, let's make it 5,550. There we go. And just so we can see this actually happening, let's do this. So if I tap on, well, I need to deploy this. If I tap on this, there we go. Straight away, we get this message. And it'll just keep on happening every time I press that almost instantly, you'll see that being received. And we can see there's the value 550. This is a good time to explain why delays are not a good thing. Let's change the code a little bit and see what happens if I use a delay instead of using this code. So I'm not gonna remove this code. All I'm gonna do is create a delay down here. I'm gonna say delay 10 seconds. And if we go to the top, I'm gonna to change my delay at the top. I'm gonna to change that to, let's make that, let's make that one second for now, because it won't really matter. It'll delay for one second, but then at the bottom, it's gonna use this actual delay function for 10 seconds. So let me send that across to our device. Let's wait for this to boot up properly. And we'll see what happens when we go and try and inject when there's a delay. So it's delaying now for 10 seconds. I'll wait for a little bit and we'll let it run through one more time. You can see that there is actually a delay of 10 seconds. There we go. 
Now, if I press this, I'm injecting it. You can see it's successfully injected, but nothing is coming through on this end. So make sure you do not use delays. Essentially, what it's doing is just pausing your code at that point, which means it's pausing everything. It's not allowing anything to happen. So I can press this as much as I want. Maybe I'll catch it. No, it didn't even catch it because it's coming through so quickly and then it hits the delay again and it just won't let it happen. So make sure you do not use delays if you are trying to subscribe to MQTT topics. So let's remove this delay again and get it back to working as it should. If we come back up here, we're gonna set the delay here back to 20,000 milliseconds, which is 20 seconds. And that's just a good amount of time for us to be sending data back and forth. If you want it more frequent, that's up to you as well. Let me put that back onto our device and I'm going to do one last thing before we finish up this video and that is actually to put something on our dashboard to send that data across. So instead of injecting manually over here, let's remove that and instead we're going to put, let's put a button that'll make it easy for now. So if we go down to the dashboard, there's a button. Let's see what this button does. So when clicked payload, and we can do the same number, uh, 5,550 and done. We're gonna connect that up to our flood interval. And let's have a look at our layout. Let's make sure that the button is visible. Oh, it's down the bottom there. So let's make that smaller because that is huge right now. Let's put the button up there and fix all this mess. Let's give it a valid name or a valid label. And we'll say send 5550 to flood end. Done. And deploy and we'll see that should show up over there. Yeah, not the best looking button in the world. <laughs> but uh, it will work. Let's just, let's make it a bit bigger and change that layout again. Ugh. So one thing I don't like about Node-RED is that the layout just likes shifting around on its own sometimes, but it's easy enough to switch back. So I'm not gonna complain too much. And deploy. Well, there we go, there's a button. So let's see, this code should be back up and running over here. Let's move across to this and you should see when I press that button, that information is coming through. There we go, that is pretty simple. Once you've got the basics in place, you can see the power of how this can be used. You can put values in place using drop downs. You can use a text input field and then press a button to send it. And I will show you the full layout of how this all comes together in future episodes. But for now, go and have a play with this. Get this working on your ESP32. Start receiving data. And I'm sure that your imagination is going to come up with plenty of ideas on how to actually use this. Thank you so much for watching. I hope that you enjoyed this video and I hope that you learned something. And until the next one, stay safe and stay spicy.